Hey, welcome back to my channel where I'm building a Rams S21 plane. This is episode 21 and I'm going to install a bunch of antennas. Uh, I'm going to put my um, GPS antenna on the top right behind station 3, uh, my COM2 antenna top left behind station 3, my transponder antenna uh, underneath the pilot seat behind station 1, and my COM1 antenna underneath the passenger seat behind station 1. Um, I might have a problem, and I'm going to point this out now in case anyone's following along or copying me. Uh, I've seen some variation on the placement of antennas, and there's some discussion of what's best and everything else, so I'm not going to go into why I chose each one, but I'm going to let you do your own research uh, if you want to find placement. But the placement of these two front antennas underneath the seat, which I've heard others have done. Hang on, phone. <clears throat> but the uh, placement of these two front antennas underneath the seats um, might be a problem. If you look over there, and I think you can see it, is my fuel pump tray goes up right over where the antenna is. I actually had to move the fuel pump tray about a quarter of an inch from its designated spot, and it worked, and I've got a little notch cut out, so the antenna's good, but there's also a servo tray that's gotta go there, and I'm hoping there's enough clearance uh, that I can get my antenna in. Below the passenger seat, there's also another servo tray uh, that goes right here, and I'm not 100% sure that this placement's good, but I haven't laid out that servo tray yet. So at this point, I'm going to show the video of installing them, show you my process and technique, but the placement is still questionable, and I'll post that on a future video uh, of whether this worked out or not, or whether I had to move the uh, location. So with that, uh, let's go start putting antennas in. I'm going to mount my GPS antenna and look into my options. My ELT antenna I put further down, which needs to be three feet away. So I'm going to put my... Uh, GPS antenna here. I think I'm going to put one comm antenna there and then the second comm antenna underneath the seat with the um, transponder antenna. So that should work. I made a doubler bracket that I'm going to mount up against one of the stringers underneath here. So I'll get the rivets into the stringer, the rivets into the skin, and then also the bolts from the unit itself to mount up there. So that should be a good doubler underneath that skin. Remember, no priming. I don't think I have any prime up there. I don't, and no prime on the part. So for antennas, you don't want to prime the contact points. Okay, I have the uh, GPS antenna installed, and it's up in the bracket and screwed on. I did read that to test the ground, and the connectivity is check the ohm reading between the screws and the ground and it needs to be 0 0.003 or less and mine was bouncing back and forth between 0, 01 and 0, 02 so it looks like I got it right so we'll move on to the next antenna uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my antenna mounts uh, when I make my doublers I use a piece of uh, 6061 aluminum. This is 0 0.040 thickness. The skin is 0 0.020, so I get a total strength of 060, which I've heard is good enough for doublers. I usually do about a 5 inch by 5 inch uh, piece on the smaller antennas. Um, for cutting the, the aluminum, I use my compressor grinder. Uh, my Dremel just doesn't get through this 040 that well, so the compressor hydraulic uh, grinder seems to do pretty well getting through it. Um, some of the antennas will give you a mounting template or a, a, a template for your screws and your holes. Uh, some of the Garmin stuff does not. You're just going to measure it out and center it. Um, some of them give you mounting screws. Uh, some do not. Uh, your mounting screws oftentimes are the connectivity um, to go through and then connect up and through the nut and the bolt on your doubler actually forms the ground. Uh, other times that this, this will be the ground itself. The other tip I've heard is to clean these off uh, before you put the surfaces together with some acetone just to get all the grease and dirt and everything so you get good connectivity. 
And the last thing is I've heard is uh, use an RTV sealant. It's like silicone around the perimeter uh, or around at least the screw holes, but around the perimeter to keep moisture from getting in. But you don't want too much because this has got to make contact with that skin uh, to get your ground. Um, and that's how I do my doublers. I have finished the comm antenna. This will be my COM1 because it's on the bottom of the plane and it is uh, up there and everything worked. I got number eight stainless steel pan head screws or flathead screws, stainless steel uh, nuts, brass washers, and I've got basically zero, zero, two ohms resistance and one ohm on some of the nuts so it's all set. Uh, I've decided I'm going to put my second comm antenna up top on the other side. This will be my comm 2. Supposedly, you're not supposed to have this within three feet of the GPS antenna or the ELT. The ELT antenna is plenty far enough away. But I, I did some research and a lot of articles are saying those are the old radios and the new radios it's 18 inches. And I've seen other builders put it up there. Um, and I did want to have my two comm antennas separated, but by making this COM2, I'm figuring I won't be using it as much, and my COM1 will be the bottom of the plane antenna. The uh, next antenna I'm going to install is my transponder antenna, and it's pretty much the same installation as the others. I'm going to put this up under the pilot side. I've created a doubler plate. Uh, so you've got the COM1 over here, and my transponder will be over here. Same installation, doubler plate, and secure it and ground it. I need to get the primer off for the grounding for the antenna. Uh, the acetone did not work getting this primer off, which is a good thing, telling me the primer is pretty good. So I'm using my Dremel with a uh, wire tip to it. And that's, that's getting it pretty clean. And then I'll acetone after that uh, to clean it up even better. Okay, we've got the uh, transponder antenna installed. And the doubler up here. Remember the last thing you do is check the ohms reading between a nut and the ground. And you should have uh, less than three um, on the meter. But that's all done, and we're going to move on. I think the next thing I'm going to tackle is either the trim servos or the header tank. i got to figure out which of the two, but we'll move on. I did notice I may struggle with the placement of these two antennas, and this is just my bad for not under, looking forward far enough and understanding, but it looks like the fuel pump is going to sit in here, and it may interfere with that. And over there is a... Um, Automatic pilot. I think it's the roll servo. Maybe it's the pitch servo. That looks like it may butt up against there. So as I go, I'm going to see if I made a mistake in putting those in. Um, but we'll take it one step at a time. We'll make that determination. Okay, I placed the tray for my fuel pump, the mounting tray, into its place. And I am going to have to move it over about a quarter of an inch to give my antenna enough room to plug in here. I actually got lucky because I randomly just placed that by eye. Um, there is also a server plate or tray that's going to come down here, but that's got some room in it and I can actually notch that a little if I have to. So I'm actually lucky I don't have to move that antenna mount. Um, I would probably wait for future builders, wait to put your antenna mounts in until your fuel pump, your servo, and your header tank is in, probably a better location is going to be back here behind this, uh, this cage bar rather than in front. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it since mine is, it does appear to clear. There's also a servo motor that's going to go over there, but I think I'm good on that one. So just a note to future builders, maybe you want to wait on your antenna mounts until you get some of this stuff installed. So what I did to kind of figure out the order of things and what I would do next is I went to the EAA builder's log of a guy that finished his S21 in June and he did a real nice job and he had built an RV before so I thought he had pretty good building skills and the builder's log is nice because it chronologically lists exactly 
what someone does step by step, day by day. So rather than just following a manual, a lot of the videos kind of skip around a little bit, but the builder's log is just day by day uh, record of what was built. And it's a good place to go looking at things. You can go on to, to it without being a member. Um, and it's also a great place if you want to document your build, uh, which is required. It's a great site for doing that. And I looked at what this guy had done and where about I am now, he moved forward and did his header tank and then his fuel pump uh, in through here. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll end that here. Uh, kind of a short segment. Uh, the antenna mounts took me 11.4 hours. That brings my build time to date to 736.5 hours. Uh, that does not include a lot of the research time. That's build time. Um, uh, the next segment, I'm going to do the header tank, fuel pump, fuel valve, and that one's going to be a little bit longer. So we'll end this one quick. And I still don't have the antenna mounts completely solved yet so we'll get that taken care of hopefully the next video and with that thanks for watching and remember dream it just build it